Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I guess most of you know, probably all of you know, that I'm an old-fashioned preacher. And I've got an old-fashioned subject today. One of the things that really has bothered me in recent years is how, beloved, the church and preachers have gotten away from the blood. They're so afraid that they're going to offend someone by talking about the blood. Do you know that some of the hymn books have changed that word blood in the, in the old hymns? Folks, I'm going to tell you, we're on the wrong path. We're on the wrong path. The title of my message this morning is simply the blood. The blood. Hebrews chapter 9. I want you to read with me verse 22. And the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, is no remission. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, how we thank you and praise you for the precious blood that was shed. And Lord, you know it breaks our heart as we see God, uh, the church, and see Christians, Lord, turning away from the blood. Father, I, I, I pray that God, before Jesus comes back, that, Lord, we might understand the importance of that precious blood that was shed. I ask you, Father, to take this today and, God, accomplish their, thy will. Father, if there be one here that's lost, God, may they come to that fountain, that fountain of blood. Lord, may we who are saved May we understand how much we owe to the blood of Christ. And God, may we leave this house determined, God, to live our lives accordingly. Father, have your way. Glorify thy son. God, use this piece of clay. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. Amen. You know, one of the... You know, our God is a God of mysteries, amen? And one of the great mysteries of God is that God, listen, demands blood for the remission of sin. There's no other way to take your sin away but by the blood. Now, we see that all throughout the Bible from Genesis right on. We see that. But the mystery is why the blood? Why the blood? I mean, you know, God is good, amen? God is holy. God is kind. God is loving. Now, why would a God, beloved, like that, uh, why, would, why would he, beloved, demand something as horrible as blood? Why would he demand that to pay for our sin? Why would he demand blood for the remission of sin? Why would he demand blood to remove our sin? I'll tell you why. And it's really, really simple. Beloved, God demands blood for the remission of sin because he is good, because he is holy because he is uh, righteous, because he is loving, because he is kind. That's why God demands blood. Folks, God didn't make man sinners. Listen, we did that ourselves. He made us perfect, perfect. And all oh, beloved, how he loved that new creature called man. He loved them so much, and this is amazing to me. He loved them so much that he made them 
in his own image. In his own image. Beloved, he loved us so much or loved man so much that he gave, beloved, them everything. I mean, the, everything they could ever need. He, he made a special portion of earth. And let me tell you, earth in the beginning, beloved, was beautiful. But he took a special portion of earth and he planted a garden, beautiful garden, beloved, for man to dwell in, a place called paradise, paradise. Everything, beloved, that man could ever want was there. Oh, how he loved them so much. He made them, beloved, so they would follow him. So that they, beloved, could fellowship with him. I, and he could fellowship with them. So they could walk and talk with God so, so he could enjoy them and they could enjoy him so he could love them and they could love him back. Folks, that was the reason for man's creation. By the way, that's the reason you were created or born. That's the reason. For, and, and there they were, beloved, listen, in that beautiful place, only one thing could mess all of that up. And that one thing was sin. Was sin. Oh, if they sinned, beloved, they could no longer know God because God is holy. They could no longer fellowship with God. They could no longer walk and talk with him, beloved. They could no longer fellowship with her, their creator because God is holy and righteous. So God warned the man, the man that he created. He said, thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat of that tree, thou wilt surely Come on. Die. Die. God said, all of this I give to you. One thing I ask, that you not eat of that tree. And we know the story, don't we? They ate of that tree. They took of it. And they sinned. And beloved, they fell, beloved, from perfection into sin. Beloved, the curse of sin fell upon all of God's creation. Suffering and pain and sorrow and fear and death, death fell upon them and upon the whole world. A sinful nature entered into the heart of man and beloved, the sentence of death fell upon their soul their souls. Now, there they were. There they were. Beloved, they were sitting in a world of ruin and they themselves were ruined. And not only that, but their children were ruined because, beloved, their children would inherit that sinful nature. It would be passed to them. And only one thing remained. God is still loved them. God still loved them. So God in his love, God in his goodness, God in his mercy, God in his kindness, beloved, and grace to them did something, beloved, that God did not have to do. God, beloved, made a way of escape. What They were condemned to die. But God made a way of escape. God has said, beloved, they would die if they sinned. The sentence of death was upon them and upon their children. So the Lord said, I'm going to send the Messiah, a Savior, someone to undo all that Satan has done. And what would that Messiah do? What would he do? God showed them what he would do. 
Because there, beloved, in the garden after they sinned, God, beloved, took two animals or animals. And I believe they were lambs. And God, beloved, shed their blood. And, he, and, and through the shedding of blood, God covered their sin. Now, beloved, it didn't take away their sin. It just covered their sin. It just covered their sin. and it, it, That's what it was for. It was to cover their sin until the Messiah came and, beloved, uh, paid the price for their sin. And what God was saying was this, that the Messiah, the Savior, will come one day and he'll shed his innocent blood and, and that blood will take away your sin. You see, beloved, God had, God had said the wages, or God says the wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth, it must die. We all like sheep have gone astray. There is none righteous, no, not one. But if an innocent man came and he paid that sin debt for them, their sins would be done away would be done away. And they would be saved. Saved from death. Saved from eternal torment in hell. And so all through the Old Testament, beloved, the innocent, the innocent blood of animals was shed to, to cover the, their sin until the Messiah come. You see, beloved, the blood of animals could not take away sin. It couldn't remove sin. It, it, it could only cover it for a, a, a while. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. You see, the sacrifice of those animals, beloved, was just an expression of their faith that the Messiah was coming and that he would die for them one day. Die in their place. No, listen, only the blood of a totally innocent man could remove our sin, our sin. And if this Messiah, beloved, was, was, uh, was an innocent of sin himself, he couldn't die for us. Because then, beloved, if he had sin, he would have to die for his own sin. Only an innocent one could. So, beloved, the Messiah had to be, listen to me, human to die, to shed his blood, and he had to be God to live a perfect life. He had to be all God and all man. And he had to be, get this, willing, willing to die for you and I to pay our sin debt. So one day, at the appointed time, old John the Baptist was baptizing in the river of Jordan. And he looked up, beloved, and he saw a man coming. And the Holy Spirit of God whispered in John's ear and said, that's him. That's the one. That's the Messiah born of a virgin of the Holy Ghost so he, so he can be all God and all man. That's him. That's him. And John, beloved, looked. And oh, beloved, what, what, what a, a joy must have filled his heart and soul because this was the one that God had promised so long. And he cried out. He cried out. Oh, behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. Folks, that man's name was Jesus. Yeshua. And the Yeshua means, beloved, God is salvation. Here's your salvation. Here he is. It's Jesus. But how? How would he become our salvation? By his blood. By his blood. By his blood. 
You see, he would live a sinless life. He, beloved, would willingly go to the cross and allow, beloved, and, and, and allow sinful man to nail him to that tree. Then he, beloved, who was totally innocent, would suffer and die. Take your suffering and my suffering, your death and my death on himself. On himself. He's not dying for Jesus. He's dying for me. He's dying for Joe. He's dying for, for Angie. He's dying for Don. He's dying for Paul. He's dying for HL. He's dying for us. For us. Look at him there. Look at him, beloved, beaten till you could not tell he was a man, the Bible tells us. Look at him hanging there. Look at the suffering on his face. Look at him as he presses against the nails to catch a breath and falls back. Look at him growing weaker and weaker and weaker. And look at the blood, the blood that flows down from that cross. Beloved, as his blood, precious blood flowed down. Listen, all, the, all of heaven must have bowed in solemn awe at what they were seeing as the the as uh, the pray as the, the the Lord of glory, beloved, paid the price for all the sins of the world. He hung on that cross. And finally, beloved, in that sixth hour he cried. Tell a less day. Tell a less day. It is finished. And literally what that means, beloved, it's paid in full. The price of sin, the price for your sin and my sin was paid for in full. He paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. White as snow. Let that sink in, Christian. Boy, somebody ought to be standing up shouting and running around because, beloved, your sins have been paid for. They, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Now, what does this, what does this all mean? Folks, it means all of God's demands have been met. All the demands God made on you, on me, have been met. Have been met. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Oh, listen, beloved. The, the, the blood has been shed. Thank God, thank God, the blood has been shed. Beloved, innocent blood, perfect blood, Precious blood shed not just to cover our sin, but to cleanse us from all sin. I'll never forget that night. I would lay in bed at night. This is the truth. And I could feel the weight of my wicked life. I could feel it. I could feel it. It was like a ton weighing on me, weighing on me. And then that night the preacher came by and he told me what Jesus had done for me. And I called out to him, received him as my Lord and Savior. And he saved me. And that night, beloved, when I went to bed, I want you to know the weight was gone. It was gone. Why? Because his blood had washed my sins away. My sins away. Oh, listen. Praise God. We are redeemed. Bought back. 
with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without spot and blemish. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are redeemed by the blood, amen? Amen. By the blood. Folks, we don't have to be separated from God. Hey, we, we don't have to die for our sins. We don't have to be slaves to the devil and the world and the flesh. We don't have to fear and worry. We don't have to spend eternity in the torments of hell because of the blood that was shed. The blood that was shed. See, the blood of Christ sets us free. Sets us free. I love that song. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Beloved, it sets us free from sin. His blood sets us free from death. It sets us free from Satan. It sets us free from hell. If, if we'll receive his blood sacrifice by faith, by faith. Folks, you got to understand, God loves everybody. I don't care who you are, what you've done. I don't care whether you call yourself good or bad or in between. God loves everybody. Jesus died for all, for all. He paid the price for all sin. But beloved, you must receive that payment, that pardon by faith, by faith. God said, said, uh, God isn't going to force you, beloved, to be saved. God, beloved, isn't going to make you take that way of salvation. It's up to you. It's up to you. If you will take that way by faith, he'll wash your sin. You see, only by receiving and believing on Jesus will his blood payment be applied to you, to your life, to your life. Let me ask you, have you done that? Have you ever done that? Have you received him as your Lord and your Savior? Somebody says, well, preacher, I'm a good person. Didn't ask you that. Didn't ask you that. Somebody says, well, preacher, I I joined the church. Didn't ask you that. You know, there are folks all over this country who have joined church that will spend eternity in hell because they joined church and they didn't get under the blood of Christ. They didn't receive him as Lord and Savior of their lives. Preacher, I try to treat people right. Preacher, I sing in the choir. Preacher, I I hold an office in the church. Preacher, I give money to the church. That brings me to another thing. You know what his precious blood means? It means, beloved, that none of of that other stuff can save you. Because if he could, he'd have never shed his blood. He'd have never gone through that if anything else could have saved you. Listen, not being good, not being religious, not being a church member, not going to church. Listen, what, what, what can wash away my sin? Say it, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus. Folks, what did God say? God said the wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth, it must die. That's what God said. Folks, the only, listen, only the death of Jesus, a sinless man, can save you, can save you. Folks, the debt we owe God, 
For our sin is blood. It's death. It's death. And that's what, beloved, we will pay either with our own blood and an eternity in hell or by the blood of Christ by faith. The debt's going to be paid either by you or by Christ if you receive him. If you receive him. By the way, who are we? Who are we to tell God what we owe for our sin against him? Who are we? Suppose I owed HF a million dollars. And I come to HF and I say, HF, I can't pay you a million dollars. I know I owe you, but I can't pay you. So here's what I'll do, HF. Every week, I'll drop $100 in your offering plate. You think he's going to be satisfied with that? HF, I can't pay you what I owe you. But here's what I'll do. I'll join, I'll join the church, and I'll try to be a good person. I'll try to treat people right. <laughs> will, will that settle what I owe you, HF? He'd say, no way. You owe me a million dollars. A million dollars. First I said, HF, I just can't pay you that. Here's what I'll do. HF, I promise you, I will, I will be the best person you have ever seen. I'll even sing in the choir. Will that satisfy you? No way. No way. HF says a million dollars. I say to HF, I can't pay it. And Jesus steps up and says, here, I'll pay it for you. You see, that's what Jesus did. Who are we to tell God? God, I'm going to pay what I owe by joining the church. Now, joining the church is good and right. And God wants you to. But beloved, that don't save you. That don't save you. Nothing but the blood. That's what God demands for what we owe. The debt we owe God for our sin is blood. Death. And we can't pay it. So Jesus steps up and pays it for you. Folks, we owe God death. Lord, yet we say, Lord, I can't pay it. I can't pay it. But Jesus can. If we by faith will receive him as our Lord. He's already paid. It's already been paid. But for it to apply to you, you've got to say, you've got to receive him as Lord and Savior of your life. Of your life. It's like it's in the bank waiting for you to draw it out. Amen? Waiting for you to draw it out. God says no. No to all of our works, to all of our religion. No. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Someone has to die in your place. Folks, if there was anything you and I could do to save ourselves... Do you honestly believe that God would have given his own son to suffer and die like that? No. You see, this was the only way you could be saved, by his blood. By his blood. Well, preacher, why don't God just forgive me my sin without the blood of Jesus? Why don't he just ignore my sin? I'll tell you why. Because God is holy. And because God is just. And a holy, just, righteous God cannot ignore sin. He cannot say, oh, you sin, but I forgive you. He can't do that. It's got to be paid for. If God did that, beloved, he would cease to be God. He would no longer be holy. He would no longer be just. He would no longer be righteous. 
Now listen, God provided a way where he can remain holy, remain righteous, remain uh, just, and yet take your sin away by giving his own son to pay that debt for you, for you. Oh, listen. That way God is satisfied and the debt is paid and you will be saved, saved. Now somebody says, what does all this mean to me? It means everything. It means everything. Because every one of us, beginning with me, have sinned. God says it plain. For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. Folks, we are all sinners. Therefore, we all have a debt to pay. But you know, there are those who have said, I can't pay it. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, but Lord, I turn from my sin, and I ask Jesus to, to, to save me. I believe that Jesus died for me, paid my debt, and rose again. Save me, Lord. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. And those who do that, they are saved they are saved. The blood of Jesus cleansed them from all sin. From all sin. Christian, aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful? Thankful for the blood of Christ. How you ought to praise him. How you ought to love him. How you ought to thank him. How you ought to serve him with all that you have. But there are many, there are many who haven't done that. I want you to know, if you're one of those, that your soul is hanging over the pit of hell by a thin thread right now. And the only thing, only thing that's keeping you from falling into hell is that heartbeat. You are one heartbeat away from hell, from eternal torment, paying for your sin for all eternity. Any moment, any moment, that heart could stop and your eternal soul would fall, fall, fall into the torments of hell. Oh, let me tell you, his shed blood means everything to you because the only way you can prevent it is by accepting Jesus and his sacrifice for you. Accepting him and receiving him as your Lord and your Savior. If you do that, his blood will wash all those sins away. And beloved, heaven will be your eternal home. I want you to stand with me. Heads bowed and eyes closed.